situation, but girl, you just, I can't love you. Like, you just too much. I would never hang out with those type of people, or they're just beneath me, or you can't sit with us. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel, it's Princess Renny here. If you are new, welcome, welcome. We're very happy and excited to have you. Please don't forget to go down to the bottom of the screen either by tapping on my picture, which is somewhere down here, or you can scroll down if you're on your phone and just look for the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit subscribe so that you can see every time I post a new video. Um, with that being said, welcome back if you're already subscribed and you're tuning in to the second uh, video, or I should say part two of our series, which is called I'm Christian But, which is also part of Christian Chronicles. So with that being said, the very first topic that I want us to talk about um, is love. Um, I'm Christian. And I don't like people sometimes. I'm Christian, but girl, you just, I can't love you. Like, you just too much. I'm Christian, but I would never hang out with those type of people. Or they're just beneath me. Or you can't sit with us. <laughs> Do you um, relate to that? Have you said that to someone? Has someone said that to you? Um, I am definitely guilty of both saying it to someone and also having it said to me. Um, feeling like you don't belong or you're not a part of, even though... You're supposed to be my Christian brother. You're supposed to be my Christian sister. Why can't I, you know? So um, I want to talk about what love is, and we're going to go more into the scripture um, after that. But let's see. In God's word, he says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 to 21, for the sake of time, I am going to be paraphrasing some of the scriptures, but I am going to have it on the screen so you can read it verbatim, exactly how it's written in the word. So 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 to 21, then we're also going to 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, which I'll cover a little bit later, okay? So verse 19 says, we love him because he first loved us. And I'm looking down because I have my notes, as many of you guys know. Um, so I'll be looking down to make sure that I'm like reading so I don't forget anything. There we go. So I'm going to be looking down moment like every now and then just to make sure I'm covering everything that I wanted to say. So um, this scripture says that we love him because he first loved us. Um, and so that, what that's telling me is that it is through the love of God that we know what love is. It's the love that God showed us that we can be able to love others, right? So if God didn't love us, then we wouldn't know what love is. We wouldn't know how to truly love. So we're gonna continue. Um, it says, if you claim to love God, but hate another person, then you are lying. Ooh, what? God calls us a liar. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, um, when he says, He who does not love does not know God because God is love. How can you claim to love who you do not know, but hate the person that you do know? How can you claim to love this God that you cannot see, but yet you hate your brother and sister that you can see? With that being said, we are all created in God's image. He created me and you and your mom and your dad, and whoever it is, in his image. So if you're looking at someone that's created in God's image and you're like, I don't like you, then you cannot claim that you love God, right? So that's what he's telling us. And so verse 21, same 1 John chapter 4, verse 21, it says, God commands us as his children to love one another. And um, he's telling us that if we love him, we would keep his commandments. If he's commanding us to love one another, the way that we can show that we truly love God is by keeping that commandment, which is to love. There you go. You got it. To love one another. Exactly. So I see like it's a cycle, right? So like God loved us. He showed us what that perfect love is so that we can love others. He also commanded us to love others. So he didn't just command us and say, yes, go love, go love. He showed us by sending his one and only son to die on the cross for our sins. That is the perfect, purest type of love there is. And that's what he's commanding us to show to our brothers and to our sisters, despite what they might have done. He's calling us to love them. And God is saying that if we love him, we would keep his commandments. One of those commandments is to love one another. Got it? Are you guys on the same page? Awesome. So, now, this is a very important question. 
we need to ask ourselves, what is love? Like, what does love look like? Yes, we saw God's perfect image of, you know, Christ laying down his life on the cross for our sins. But how can I do that? Because I might not want to go and get prosecuted for somebody else. Like, how do I show that? Um, I know, I have some examples for you. You know what it is? In the church, when we go and we hang out with our own group of people, because they look like us, they walk like us, they talk like us, they dress like us. Yes, that's my friend, because we the same, right? I'm not going to hang out with this other person, because she doesn't look like me, or she doesn't dress as nice as I do, or he doesn't have as much money as I do, so I'm not going to hang out with him, right? Maybe that's what it is. Or... Maybe it's choosing to walk past a person that's um, less fortunate, like in the streets, someone who's begging for money or for food or anything else like that, and giving them the ill stank face. I've seen it before. I don't think I've ever done that, thank God. But I've seen people do that. They're like, basically like, get away from me. And they're, this person's in me. This is your brother and your sister. And we hear the story about the Good Samaritan, right? Where all these, you know, people that are proclaimed to have this high position in the house of the Lord, right? The priests and all these other people, they saw the person who's least fortunate walked right past them. Acknowledge, like, didn't even acknowledge them. They saw them, but didn't acknowledge them, walked pa right past them. Or chose to go on the other side of the road just to go past them. Like, you made a mental note that, okay, I see this person. This person looks like they're in need. I'm not going to help them, but I'm also going to avoid them. I'm going to cross the street and go over to the other side. How many of you guys have been guilty? I've been guilty of going on the other side because I've seen somebody that, to be honest, I was a little creeped out, didn't know what they were going to do, and I went to the other side. And reading that scripture convicted me because it's like, God called us to love our brothers and sisters. Okay, if I really don't have it, um, I can offer a prayer for them. I can offer whatever it is of myself um, as I see the Holy Spirit leading me to do. There's times where our brothers and sisters are in need of like financial things um, and we decide, you know what, I'm just going to pray for you. Like we know we have the money, but you're just like, I'm going to pray for you. I, I'm going to pray for you. God is going to break that yoke. Yes, your breakthrough is coming. I'm going to pray for you. And it's like, but I sent you though. So, yes, it's not that. It's not just hanging out with your own people or like looking down on someone else. Um, but maybe it's making decisions for yourself without regards to anyone else, right? Like, I know what I want. It's about me, 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 myself, and I. That's all I got in the end, <laughs> you know? So, like, maybe that's what it is to you. No, that's not what it is. It's not just about focusing on yourself, right? Um, ooh, I like this one. I think it is choosing to make someone pay for the wrong that they've done to you. You know, like, if someone has talked behind your back, you go and you do the same. Or if someone has lied on you, or told a lie about you, or stolen from you, or hurt you physically, emotionally, whatever the case may be, and you go and you do it back. That's what love is, because they need to see the consequences of what they've done. That's love, right? It's called tough love. <laughs> Obviously, guys, that's not what love is. And as I broke it down with the Samaritan story, um, I also want to break it down a little bit more to let you guys know that love is patient and love is kind. Love is long-suffering, as we can see in the scriptures of um, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 13. And I'm going to say 13, 4 to 8. So um, it's telling you that love suffers long. Um, it's a sacrifice. Um, it's all about forgiveness and patience and kindness and endurance, meaning that love never fails. Um, even when other things do, it continues to push towards the mark. Um, and most importantly, love, and I said this already, love holds no record of wrong. So someone might have done wrong to you and you may still be feeling that pain. It takes a while for that pain to go away, but we can't do it on our own, right? Uh, we have to trust in God and depend only solely on him. So um, I am going to be talking more about like forgiveness and all that stuff in my next segment.
But I think it's very important for us to understand what love is and understand that God has called us. He's commanded us to love one another like he loved us and to love one another as we love ourselves. Um, so, of course, we should love him. And in the same vein, we should love others. So those are the two biggest commandments. When the Pharisee asked Jesus which ones were most important, he gave them both of them. You need to love the Lord, your God, and you also need to love others. So whatever it is that you may be dealing with um, within you that is causing you to put up this barrier to not love others, and not just to say, oh, I love you, just that word, but that unconditional love, like this is what I'm going through, I'm hurt, or whatever the case may be, but I still love you despite that. I'm gonna break down these walls and I'm still gonna love you. I'm gonna love the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever it is, because I know I have that within myself as well. And we have to make that decision every single day. God commands us to forgive one another not just seven times, but 70 times seven, right? So what is that? I'm usually really good at math. That's 490 times that God has commanded us to forgive someone in one day, in one day, to forgive someone 490 times. And we know that no one's perfect. I'm not perfect. I made a lot of mistakes. And I don't wanna to get too deep into like the forgiveness part and things like that, but I do want you to remember once again, it's very important that we love one another. And I want us to answer this reflection question. What is something that's preventing you from loving someone? Is it something that they did? You know, maybe you're holding on to a grudge or you're holding on to the past. Is it because they don't look like you? Is it because you haven't taken the time to get to know them truly? Um, is it that they're annoying to you? Um, what is it that's preventing you from loving someone wholeheartedly and unconditionally? Go ahead and leave that in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Um, part two, again, we'll be talking a little bit more about forgiveness. Don't forget to give this a video a thumbs up if you liked it. Also, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet. I don't know what you're waiting on, but go ahead and hit the subscribe button and so you can come back for more videos like this. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Be blessed, spread love, and stay beautiful inside and out. Bye, guys.